everybody, my name is Zilla Prince, and welcome back to yet another reaction video. Now, this is a reaction video is a little bit different. We're taking a turn from SCP Foundation stuff to, like, oversimplify and whatnot, because those are the videos that are really good on my channel, and so we won't We're actually going to be reacting to the first video, I believe, I believe it's the first video, that I'll be reacting to, to this channel. This is Simple History, and this is the Tiger Tank 131. I actually know a little bit about the Tiger 131, my ad. I actually did a research topic about it in during my first semester of college, which was last year in December. Yeah, it was December. And I actually know it's the only working functional T-130, not T Tiger 131 in the entire world out of the thousands of Tiger tanks that were deployed and made during World War II. And in this, it's the only tank that I know of of the Tiger class that's still fully operational. And this video is supposed to, I'm pretty sure it's going to be talking about the history of the Tiger 131. So we're going to go ahead and click right into this because the Tiger tank is my favorite World War II tank of all time. We're going to go ahead and click play in this bad boy in 3, 2, 1, boom. This episode is sponsored by World of Tanks and Tank Fest. Okay, I have to. multiplayer tank combat game accessible Sorry. to any World War II. I didn't realize it was a sponsor to you. All right, here we go. Not yeah, many weapons, one. vehicles, or aircraft of the World War II era have gained the iconic status that the Tiger tank did. It has a reputation that stands to this day. Just to see one of these beasts standing in a museum display is an experience. I would love to go see this there in a museum. One that can be seen in action. It's the last working Tiger tank in the world, Tiger 131 of the Tank Museum in Bovington, England. It's in England. The baptism right. of fire for the Tiger tank was in autumn of 1942 on the Eastern Front, when a platoon of four Tigers were sent to the Leningrad Front. In December of the same year, the Tigers were sent to the North African Front in Tunisia, where the Germans were trying to stop the Allied offensive. This was where Tiger 131 was deployed. The Tiger 131 came down the assembly line at the Henschel factory in Kessel in February 1943 was painted in dunkelgel but dark yellow and was assigned the serial number 250122 hmm. along with the other tiger tanks 131 was mounted on a railway carriage and transported to the port of trapani sicily over there they embarked on a cyble ferries a motorized raft used by the germans for transport the final destination was tunis north africa hmm. once the tanks arrived in tunis in mid-march they had their narrow tracks mounted for transport by railway removed and replaced with wider ones intended for use on the wow. soft terrain of the desert. I didn't know they Parts swapped that out were disassembled the for easier transport were the then terrain. reassembled. The now ready for battle tanks were then deployed to the 504th Heavy Tank Battalion of the 5th Panzer Army. Tiger 131 was deployed to the 1st Company, 3rd Platoon, as the first tank of the platoon commander, hence its 131 designation, which was painted red on both sides of the turret. The first task for Tiger Tank 131 and its first company was to reinforce the German positions at the Sfax Maknasi area. By now, the Tunisian campaign was in its final stage. British and American troops were advancing towards the city of Tunis, the last stronghold of the Axis in Africa. On April 21st, in order to withhold the advance of the British Army, the Germans launched Operation Lilac Blossom. The aim of the operation was to counterattack the British advancing from the region around the hill called Jebel Jaffa. Tank 131 was just one of the tanks that participated in the operation in what was to be a decisive battle. For Tiger 131, the war ended right there and then during the last German defense before the Tunisian capital. Almost completely intact, it would end up in British hands. There's a small shroud of mystery on how this happened. As for 75 years, it was believed that the tank was captured on the slopes of Jebel Jaffa, while it actually happened 10 miles northeast of there, hmm. on a smaller hill known as Point 174, so it's a also of how known they as Girat el Attar. Point 174 came into the center of events after the British managed to defeat the Germans in the Battle of Longstop Hill on April 22nd and 23rd, 1943. The British concentrated their attack on Point 174 and the nearby Point 156, west of the town of Mejezelbab. After their attacks were repelled on April 23rd, a new one commenced the following day. Point 174 was attacked by the 2nd Sherwood Foresters and Point 156 by the 1st King Shropshire Light Infantry. 
Both battalions were supported by a composite tank battalion under the command of the 142nd Royal Armored Corps. Huh. The 1st right. King Shropshire Light Infantry were quicker to capture their objective, but did it with heavy casualties. The 2nd Foresters also had many casualties, but with much more difficulty in seizing the top of Point 174. On the afternoon of April 24th, the Foresters finally seized the crest, only to be attacked by German tanks in a hull-down position from a distance of 300 yards. The Foresters bravely withheld the Tiger's intense shelling, so then one of the Tigers decided to leave its position and head for Point 174. It with Tiger 131. Once it arrived on the top of the hill, panic broke out. The tank was fired upon from all sides. Infantrymen were firing bursts from their small arms and projectiles from their anti-tank piats. Some of the Foresters managed to capture a French 75mm gun and started firing on Tiger 131. Finally, the supporting Churchill tanks of the B Squadron of the 48 Royal Tank Regiment and the Ad Hoc Squadron of the 142 Royal Armored Corps opened fire on the don't neighboring know any hill of the 151. In this raining hail of bullets and shells, Tiger 131 suddenly stopped. One of the shells hit the Tiger's gun barrel and ricocheted into the turret ring and jammed the turret. Another shot then impacted the turret lifting lug, disabling the gun's elevation device. Then a final third shot hit the loader's hatch, deflecting shrapnel into the turret. The crew of the Tiger, probably wounded and panic-stricken, decided to evacuate the tank. There was a doubt as to whether it was a shell from the French 75mm gun or from the Churchill's six-pounder gun that disabled the turret. Hmm. The latest research by experts from the Tank Museum at Bovington showed that it was most likely the shell from one of the Churchills from Point 151 that stopped the tank. Even today, impact damage from 57mm shells and 303 bullets are evident on the tank. The Foresters remained on Point 174 for the next six days, along with the captured Tiger 131. On May 7th, the 104th Army Tank Workshop arrived at Point 174 and recovered the Tiger from the battlefield. After it was repaired and put back into working order, the tank was towed away to Tunis on May 24th, which by that time was liberated by Allied troops. The German cross was removed, and a shield of the 1st Army and the Diabolo of the 21st Army Tank Brigade were painted at the front of the hull. So they, While in Tunisia, right. it was displayed to King George VI and Prime Minister Winston Churchill, who desired to see this beast of a tank. The captured Tiger Tank 131 was a magnificent war trophy for the British, who decided to transfer it to England. The tank was driven to La Goulette Harbor and ferried to Bizerta on August 3, 1943. In Bizerta, the tank embarked on the SS Empire Candida and sailed to Bonn, from yeah, where it was transferred to Glasgow to on board the SS Ocean Strength. Cool too. It finally arrived in the UK on October 8th. In the UK, Tiger 131 started a new life. Before it was taken to the Department of Tank Design in Chertsey, Surrey, it was displayed at the Horse Guards in London and even had a public display tour around the country. The show, however, didn't last long, as experts from the tank department laid their hands on it, subjecting it to thorough examination. The tank was so stripped learn of how the majority tank. of the important parts, such as its engine, gearbox, and many others. So they could it learn was how in to such a condition that it was ultimately put aside, as by the end of the war, an interest in further research was lost. Finally, on September 25, 1951, the tank was handed over to the Tank Museum at Bovington. Over there, Tiger 131 spent almost four decades at the museum as a static display until a team of restorers decided to bring it back to life. In a highly demanding project, Tiger 131 was stripped to pieces with the majority of its original parts returned back in place after refurbishment. Some components, such as wiring, were replaced with modern versions, while some had to be completely remanufactured. Its breath of life was an in-working order Maybach HL-230 engine taken from another Tiger tank to replace the original HL-210 engine that was scrapped by engineers at the Department of Tank Design. Finally, the tank was painted in a proper paint scheme with all the original German markings restored. The end result is the greatest attraction of the Tank Museum, the only fully operating Tiger tank in the world. On the now famous Tiger Days, museum visitors have the opportunity to see in action one of the most famous tanks in history.
This episode was brought to you by World that of Tanks. That was really good. I didn't know that. I know how it was captured. I just knew it was when I looked it up. I'm so I'm kind of a little bit disappointed in one fact though. It, I'm saying the whole video itself was good. I'm just surprised that they didn't mention that the tank itself was actually in the movie, uh, the Fury, Fury that came out in 2014, the uh, tank movie, uh, Fury. That was the tank that you see uh, fighting the Shermans in the movie Fury is actually the same German tank that was just sh that they were just talking about in this video. Because uh, I actually did a research paper on that and I found that the, the Tiger Luna, stop it. Kind of always acts up to this hour. Uh, it was actually the tiger tank that was used in the tiger move in the movie. It was actually the real tiger tank itself. So a little interesting fact that you guys didn't know that. But uh, hopefully, you guys did enjoy this video. I'll subscribe for all this stuff, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>